teach us about who God is. No, about who God is. And so he the the, the thing is that God chose Abraham no, so that he will be the in charge. God gave him the in charge so that he will teach his family, you no, know, his generation. The, especially the, the, the Israelites, you no know, circumcision. Circumcision started with Abraham, isn't it? And then he performed with Isaac, and then Isaac to Jacob, Jacob to all his uh, generation throughout the you no. Know. So the, the, the people of Israel that performed circumcision. It started from Abraham. So that is a simple example, no? one example that God said, because I have chosen him to do what is right. I have chosen him so that he will teach his family members. He will teach his community. He will teach his people how to live a righteous life and how to live a life of justice and righteousness. When God reveals no, something to you, it will be a lesson no, for your family members. It will be a lesson for your community. It will be a lesson for your church members. God will not simply reveal to anyone. Whoever lives a righteous life, whoever do what is justice, what is right, God will reveal. And so two reasons why God took initiative in revealing to Abraham is because he found grace in the sight of God. He was a man of righteousness. He was a man of faith. And then he was, he was to be. God appointed him to be a blessing. God appointed him to teach his family, to teach his generation you know, about faith, about obedience, about justice. And so likewise, when we live, you know, when we live a righteous life, you know, God will not, uh, God will not, uh, I mean, God will definitely reveal you know, his plan and then his program and then his purpose uh, to each one of us. It does not mean that Abraham was not, uh, I mean, Abraham did not commit sin. Abraham had a failure, no doubt. Abraham had a failure. But Abraham did not stick on to his failure and continue living in an in a, in a immoral life or disobedience life. He got up from the place where he failed, where he fall. And then, you no, know, trust, uh, keep trusting uh, God. And so, God now, now uh, as I say, that Abraham knew what, what was going on in the, in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. But he did not know how God is going to you know, do, what God is going to do with Sodom and Gomorrah. Till God revealed to Abraham, he did not know. He knew the condition of that, uh, of that uh, city, but he did not, Abraham did not know the end of, or the result of their disobedience life and so God revealed his uh, secret uh, to him and so after God revealed, revealed his secret to him what did uh, Abraham do now Abraham started to intercede no? Abraham started to intercede for the people of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and so verse uh, 22 now it says so the man turned from there and went toward Sodom, but Abraham still, still stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Now, God revealed his secret to Abraham, and then Abraham started to plead, you know, started to pray. Started to pray and intercede. <clears throat> I have, uh, no, I have family members no, who are not yet saved. Who are not yet saved. I know that the, they live a wicked life. I know that they live a disobedient life. And so I pray. No, our family members, we pray for our family members back at home who are yet to save. Of course, they're, they say they're Christian. No doubt. Because... Uh, uh, Nagaland is a Christian state, and so everybody said that they are Christian, but they are not genuinely born again Christian, because they are Christian, because they were born and brought up from a Christian family, and so they claim themselves to be a Christian, but their life is, you no, know, their life 
is. To live a life, you know, that is abomination in the sight of God. And so, you no, know, we intercede, you no, know, our family intercede for our family members, those who are not yet genuinely born again. Genuinely born again. And so he began to intercede, you know, the passion that Abraham had, the compassion that he had for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham did not say, oh, yes, Lord, press the Lord. Yeah. I, I was also thinking, you no, know, that the, these people should be punished. Right? Abraham did not say. From before, I was expecting that, you no, know, you should destroy these people. He did not say that. Or Abraham did not say, I am righteous and these people are wicked. No. Abraham does not have that uh, better than thou attitude, right? Said, oh, like the Pharisees, no, the Pharisees, who point finger at the, at the publican and then say, no, I'm not like him, I'm not like her, right? I fast and pray, I tithe, I offer, I sacrifice, I go to church, no. I go for a prayer meeting, And I'm better. No, I'm, I'm best. But they are wicked. I never see them in the church. I never see them giving uh, tithes and offering. I never see them in the prayer meeting. No. Abraham did not uh, just start you not know, justifying himself before God. He did not start that, uh, that justification. No? Self-justification or, or self-righteous. Uh, he did not. But instead, you no, know, instead he started pleading, he started interceding for this wicked people, for this wicked you no know, nation or country. Instead of you no know, asking God to punish, how many of us, you no, know, how many of us? Instead of asking God to punish these uh, 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 Muslims and then Hindus in India persecuting Christians and then killing missionaries, persecuting missionaries, how many of us we have prayed for these people that God will have compassion on them, you know, have mercy on them, instead of asking God to destroy them? Abraham started to intercede. And so he did not say that, uh, no, that deserve punishment, that deserve punishment. So Abraham does not have time, no, Abraham does not have time for self-righteousness. <clears throat> but he started to intercede. Why? Why Abraham started to pray for Sodom and Gomorrah? Why? The first reason is he knew who he was. Abraham knew who he was while he was in Ur of Mesopotamia. Abraham was also like this, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. But he found grace. And then God called him, forgive his sin, and then make a covenant with him. And he said, I will make you a great nation. Before we blame others, you know, before we started to pray for the destruction of uh, you know, the unbelievers, we have to retrospect uh, what kind of people we were before we receive the grace of God. Before we receive the mercy of God. So Abraham knew that God is a God of long suffering. He knew that God is a God of mercy. God is a God of forgiveness. God is full of grace and mercy. Abraham knew that. Because he himself experienced the grace of God in his life while he was in Ur of Chaldea. Ur of Chaldea. And so instead of saying that I, I am righteous, I am good, I am better than this Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, no, he started to pray. Because he knew that God can, right? God can save, God can forgive. And so... Abraham recognized the mercy of God you know, because he experienced from his life you know, how God showed his mercy 
and then uh, and then save him. And so Abraham said, no, in verse uh, in verse uh, uh, twenty-four. Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you sweep them away? The bless and not spare for the fifty righteous who are in ne- who are in it. See, he said, suppose. So suppose if there is if there is at least 50 righteous 50 genuinely believers no who love you who obey your word will you spare no Sodom and Gomorrah Abraham knows that God will never destroy the righteous so he prayed will you no. suppose if there is 50 at least will you spare this uh, uh, people so we need to pray no we need to pray for these people lord will you no have mercy on them and then will you speak to my uncles will you speak to my brothers will you speak to my sisters that they may find grace and mercy and then turn from their from their wicked ways turn to you for grace for salvation and then for no, forgiveness. Jesus told us that we are the salt, right? You are the salt of the earth. In Matthew chapter 5. Salt is to preserve, right? To preserve. And it is our duty. No, we are the salt of the earth. And it is our duty to pray no, for God's intervention. No? For God's intervention for those people who are perishing, you know, who are perishing, and so you know, he Abraham knew that God is a God of grace and God is full of mercy. So he he intercedes, and then we also see in verse, uh, and then in verse twenty-seven, Abraham answered and said, "Behold, I have undertaken to speak to you, Lord. I who am but dust and ashes." You see? Now, Abraham knew his position. Abraham is a man, and God is sovereign, the creator and preserver of everything. You know, men, nature, animals, you know, including, the, including the nature, God is sovereign. You know, God is the controller. And so Abraham humbled himself and he said, Lord, I'm not worthy. No, I'm nothing. I'm dust and ashes. But if it is your will, no, if it is your will, answer, no, answer my prayer. No, answer my prayer. When you go to prayer, no, maybe morning, evening, afternoon, when you go for prayer, you don't pray, Lord. No, we don't pray like the Pharisees. No, we don't pray. Lord, I'm righteous. No. Lord, I'm very good. Mm. Lord, no, I'm very humble. We don't pray, right? We don't go with that attitude. You no, know, when we go before the before the righteous God, you no, know, before the righteous God. We are sinners. We deserve punishment. We deserve death. But God, <coughs> excuse me. But God is so merciful, and so Abraham himself humbled himself and went to God and prayed. He said, "Lord, you know, no, you know who I was. You know who am I? Because you know better than I know myself." See, you know me, See, you know me better than I know myself. I'm a man of unclean lips, a man of unclean heart. But I want to, once again, I want to plead with you. No, I want to ask you, you know, to have mercy on these people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so God, you know, this is the, 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 the language that God wants to hear. You know. Because James tells us that God resisted the proud, but give grace to the humble. 
right? If you if you go to God, no God, no, I'm a righteous, I'm good, and you have to answer me, you have to give me. Mm. God will close the door and say, "Go and do whatever you like." You see. God always you know, answer the prayer of a humble heart, a humble and a contrite spirit. A humble and a contrite spirit. So Abraham knew who he was. And so knowing his condition, knowing his sinfulness, before the Almighty God, before the righteous God, he went and humbled himself. And God honors God honors and answers such kind of prayer. When we pray, no, when we pray, what is our attitude, right? What is our attitude when we pray? And so he prayed for the protection of Sodom and Gomorrah. So he said, Lord, if there is you know, 50, if there is uh, 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 45, if there is uh, 40, if it is 30, if it is uh, 20, if it is 10, no. Abraham keep on bleeding you know, in the sitting for the people of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And so, why, why Abraham uh, uh, prayed, you see? He, he went, he went, he keeps on you know, praying in the sitting. But in verse 33, what, what do we find? In verse 33, And the Lord went his way when he had finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Now, remember, okay, remember, it was not Abraham who quit. It was God who quit. Here. Because the Bible tells us that God, the Lord, went away from, you know, communicating with Abraham. It was God who quit here. Because he knew that there was not Abraham went down to even to 10. But there was not. Even if Abraham goes down to 5, there was not even 5. Because when we read you know, chapter 19, only 3 people were saved. Even Lot's wife. She turned back. You know, and she was turned into a pillar of salt. Why did she turn back? Because she loved the, the bless of Sodom and Gomorrah. She loved the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so even if Abraham goes down to five, not even five. Not even five. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we keep praying, praying, praying. We keep on praying. But God turned his face away. You know? God will quit. When it is not his purpose. When it is not his will. No, God will quit. And even if we pray. No, see, God, the Lord went away. What is the use of Abraham praying if the Lord is not going to listen to him? What is the use of we praying no, when God is not going to answer? Because I'm going to talk about the timing, no? The timing of God. Because these people are not going to no, listen. These people are not going to repent. Because three angels went to Sodom and Gomorrah and then they said they want to have sex with these three angels. And, if there are, and even after making them blind, they did not repent. And so God quit, right? God quit. Because he knew, right? He knew. Because in verse, uh, as we read at the beginning of uh, verse 17 and onwards, no, I mean uh, 16 onwards, God said, I will go down and see. I myself will go and witness. Of course, it does not mean that God did not knew. These things. And so he said, I will go down and see. And so the angel went, and then they want to have physical relationship with the angels. And the angel met the people of Sodom and Gomorrah blind. And in spite of that judgment, 
they did not repent. And so God gave up. No, God gave up. And so Abraham also went home. Went home. He knew that God is not going to answer because there is no, no there is not even five righteous men in the city of uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And so we may pray, no, we may pray, but there is no, there is God's timing. No, time, God's timing is important when we pray. At times, no, God may, <clears throat> God may answer, no, God may answer right away, no, when we pray. But at times, God may say, wait, no, wait. I know when to answer. No. I know when to give. I know when to protect. I know when to heal. And so, God has a timing. No, we should not forget to wait for God's timing. No, when we pray. When we pray. And also, we, we must remember that when we pray, no, prayer focuses on God's power. On God's power. Because as we, as we read in, uh, in uh, uh, chapter 19 of Genesis, verse uh, 29, we see that God saved uh, Lot and his family. No, God saved Lot and his family. God has the power to save. God has the power to heal. God has the power to protect. If it is his will, if it is his plan, if it is his uh, no, program. And so... And so we must not forget, no, we must remember, no, we must remember that when we live a righteous life, when we live a life of, uh, of faithfulness, trust, no, obedience, then definitely, no, definitely it is God who will reveal. And when God reveals, no, we also need to have no, an intercessory prayer. No. If it is God's will no, that those people will come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So may God bless each one of us through